What's going on everybody, it's Portal back with another Madden Ultimate Team video guys and today I'm going to be going over the changes coming following the community playtest feedback. You guys know what that is? When there was the beta, right, the beta 22 that we all were playing or whoever got access to it were playing, there was an option to give a lot of feedback in order to help progress the game. People gave that feedback and Madden is pretty much here going to list all the feedback they took in and the changes that came from it. So big gameplay changes guys so if you guys played the beta and there was a lot of questions you had like will that glitch where the wide receiver catches the ball and runs with it and i don't know where just drops it go away will that glitch where the ball flies off the screen if, if you're wondering what will happen with that stuff they're all addressed here for the most part so we're gonna go through all this one by one madden gameplay will not be the same what you saw in the beta should be significantly different to what you're going to see in the full game as well as as far as like a haircut right beta was like a messy cut and then the this is going to be like the shape up right the game may still feel similar, but all that crap that was happening, like deep zones not working or like, what's it called? Like, like that was a big glitch. You would throw it to a wide open tight end. They'd catch it. They'd come down as they're running. They would just drop it. And instead of it being fumble, which it should be, it'd be incomplete. Neither should happen, but the fumble made more sense football wise because they did take the ball and run with it. A lot of glitches, but we'll get into all that right now. Before we get into the video, though, hit that subscribe button, turn that noti bell, give this video a big thumbs up as always. And of course, you want a chance to be shouted out in the Poodle Squad. All you got to do is like the video. And comment down below poodle squad now for today's poodle squad shout out guys as i do in each and every video we got one ethan smith shout out to you ethan for being a part of the poodle squad greatly appreciate it but let's get into it so starting off guys coming down feedbacks with the most votes and comments so catching receivers defensive backs by the way this is going to be the the orange notes are going to be the the things that were the highest feedback of certain areas and then the dev note will be what they're doing Receivers and defensive backs need to be more aggressive in attacking the ball. Very true. I would throw open out routes, open curls, open slants, and they would like go for the ball, but not. So if the ball wasn't thrown literally to their face, they weren't catching that ball sometimes. They would just look at it. They wouldn't run after. They wouldn't speed up for it. They wouldn't make an aggressive catch for it. They would kind of look at it. Same thing with a lot of defensive backs. And I was like, why is that not a pick? Defenders don't always go for the interception when in position. A lot of the times it happened too. My safety would be right there. And sometimes it would be like one of those bad duck throws that goes right to my safety. They look at it, they'd run towards it, and they, then they just wouldn't, they just stop. They wouldn't finish going for it, they would just stop. A lot of things where I was like, okay, this is going to suck. Like, def defense was hard. Receiving, you know, sucks for receivers, but they have the they have the advantage, obviously, of the offense. Catch mechanics aren't always responsive. Yes, you'd press Y, the Y wouldn't activate. You'd press Y, they'd go for an aggressive and then just drop it. It was just very clunky, which, as you can see here, there was some a lot of work done on catching that did not make either of the playtest builds. So they're saying, guys, a lot of the catching was already fixed when the beta was released, but they didn't put that, or like, it was fixed right after, shortly after, but the, the playtest builds that we received that were like the working versions to play, they didn't have those fixes in there. So catching was already better than what we saw, plus the playtest, they additionally added onto it. Uh, there may be a lot... There may not be a more important system in the game than catching, and in that vein, players will experience a lot of improvements through jump height logic. This player's more appropriate catch radiuses. Yes, like you throw to a guy like Kyle Pitt, Kyle Pitt six foot six, whatever, or Waller, and they put the they wouldn't they wouldn't really go for it. Like the ball was right there, like only they could get that ball, and they wouldn't go for it. It had to be like right to him. It felt like every player was like a Tyree kill build. It was very weird. There's also more logic that increases catch aggressiveness for both offense and defense at the catch point. That's good, yeah. I Rocket catching was like low-key working on Zerk all game because I was able to just rocket it to the left side of the field and lead it outside, and his cornerback just wouldn't play it. Like, they weren't actually trying. They, not, not just play it. But let me apologize. They wouldn't aggressively play it. So the problem with that is, like, I would pull the aggressive catch and aggressively play it, but the defender might not. So literally, like, you know, in this year, you throw an aggressive catch like that. All of the all the cornerback has to do is go up with you and the ball will hit both your hands and bounce off. That wasn't happening. They weren't aggressively playing it. So I was getting like an auto catch animation. And then as well, holding Y and triangle to play ball on defense in Madden 22 will carry more risk because there are less multiplayer catches being used. Defense is playing the ball. Defenders playing the ball will have more chances to miss the ball, whereas the range for swats has been increased. Uh, okay, so that's usually, that's usually kind of the deal with this. Player movement. A lot of people said player movements too slow. Some people said player movements authentic don't change it. There should be a bigger difference between big players versus small players in speed, which is true. With a lot of players experiencing the next-gen consoles for the first time to wrap this up, they're pretty much saying a lot of people are experiencing the Xbox S and X and PlayStation 5 for the first time. So they're thinking that's why they're not used to this speed. Um, they expected this, they said. But they'll continue to make the game as real on the field. So I guess that's good too. Um, the feedback on this topic was almost evenly split. So pretty much... They're not going to be changing up the next gen player movement. They're going to keep it the way it is because people kind of just like they liked and hated it equally. But um, there are a lot of issues within the movement that they can fix. So they are going to be working on that. 
One thing is that they wanted for bigger, heavier players to show more differentiation and speed than smaller, faster players. And they've done some tuning to widen the gap between the fastest players in the league and everyone else. Now, that's important. If you guys played the beta, you notice one thing. If you sent Tyreek Hill on a streak, right? He would eventually, like really deep down the field, outrun the safety and you'd just burn them, which I think partially was because deep zones are broken. But if you notice another thing, if you threw a drag to Tyree Kill, right? I was like, oh, let me throw a drag to Tyreek. Like, he's so fast. You couldn't, you couldn't round the edge. Like, you'd throw it over the middle, right? On drag. And you couldn't get around linebackers. You couldn't, you couldn't like, usually with Tyreek, it looks like this. Like, the linebacker, you're here. He just completely beats you. He beats you up the field, right? Tyreek was getting ran sideline to sideline with ease. So, yeah, they're going to make it so the faster players feel faster. Like in real life, when Tyreek catches the ball, four people go right to him, right? That's important. Um, moving on down more. Two things I want to notice that uh, note are that acceleration and change of direction are just as important as speed. They always say that. Is it ever true? No. But next-gen player movement, it may just be. So, take it, take it a little bit more seriously this year. Um, game stability, game crashes, and soft locks. I mean, that's, that's stuff that... Not gameplay related. It's more about them fixing it. So yeah, they're going to be working on that as well. Now let's go to the bugs. These are some of the ones that are going to be that are fixed. They have been fixed for launch ready. Receivers dropping the ball really late. Like I swear to you guys, Darren Waller would catch it for me. He'd come down, he'd turn up field, and as he's turning up, the ball would just fall out like a college player scoring a touchdown. When they just drop it, he'd just drop it, and it wouldn't even be a fumble, which is what it should have been. It would just be an incomplete catch. It happened a lot, like a lot. Dive tackles are too powerful. I didn't really notice that personally, but apparently it's a thing. Dive tackles sometimes would warp a player off the ground to make the tackle. There is ongoing work in some space for diving catches. Okay. Low rated QB leads play too well on all Madden. I only played online, so I didn't really notice that. Momentum, I mean, again, maybe that does affect it, but me, me and Zerk were playing with really good teams like Chiefs and Ravens, so I wouldn't have noticed. Momentum meter fills up too fast. That is true. At one point, I had it like in the first 10 seconds of a game, literally just by scoring a big Tyreek touchdown, and then instantly he came back on offense and did something similar to me, and then he had it. It should not go back. It should momentum should not be affecting every drive. It should be something. It should be like 2K where you have to work like the first half to get it, but then easily you could lose it. Something that could help you, but not always. Something similar to that. Competitive mode momentum formula not ready for launch. Okay. Another thing, situ situational pursuit tuning. I guess that's important for certain situations. Edge rush is too powerful. Yes, pass rush was pretty powerful. But they do say here that they wanted to do that purposely because in real life, exactly. It is true. In real life, pockets like quarterbacks only have, you know, less two, less than two seconds to throw the ball. One to two seconds to throw a ball sometimes, right? But imagine you drop back, you drop back, you drop back. Sometimes you can you can hot route a guy. You can uh, play maker them. You can do a bunch of crazy crap mid play. And it's like, sometimes it's dumb. Like I had this franchise league that I was in where I had like four X factors in the D line and 60 overall offensive linemen well adjusted with the mic adjusted and all the, you know, blocking to the left, double to the right. Everything they did never was able to get through ever. It was like ridiculous how you can just adjust out of that, which in real life, there's no adjustment to be made to stop Garrett. Like you can't just point at Garrett and be like, yeah, he's done. It doesn't work that way. So I do like that. Now they are going to make it more realistic so that game feels more, you know, you can't be going deep post all game because that's what people would do. They'd abuse cover three. Why could they abuse cover three, cover four all game? Simply because pass rush doesn't work as well last year. So people can easily come out and cover four, cover three beaters all game. But if you pass rush works as well as it should, you have to do more check downs, more, more slants, more realistic. I like that. Um, gunslinger quarterback release changes. So for launch, we're distributing, we're distributing the gunslinger ability to more QBs. We'll continue investigating ways to improve QB releases for the title updates while still ensuring that QBs are properly differentiated and all QBs cannot make every throw that elite QBs can. So that's interesting. Because, yeah, Gunslinger was kind of annoying. Last year, you had to have it to play. You had to have Gunslinger to play last year, pretty much. And in Mutt, that worked. But in reg rosters, if only Aaron Rodgers or only one guy had it, that's it. You're done. Until they added ability changes. I do like this. This means they may give, like, Mahomes didn't have Gunslinger, which is really weird. Josh Allen, Mahomes, Rodgers, they should all have Gunslinger. So I'm hoping this means that Mahomes will start off the rip with Gunslinger, hopefully. QB contain not always being effective. That was one thing. Um, drive summary in game banner showing bad clock data is fixed. First down line missing is fixed. Offensive line abilities don't seem effective. These abilities have been tuned and reworked to function. Okay. Uh, improved defense for tight end delay fades. That's important. I used to hate that crap. Uh, literally, I would man up the tight end that I know is doing a fade, right? As soon as the tight end sat there blocking for more than a second, my my linebacker was switched to like a spy or just like a mid zone right there. And then, no, a spy. And then they released him right past him. So there's really nothing you could do besides user it. Tuning to impl uh, improve passer uh, brush logic. Logic to improve QB contain logic versus delay blockers and double teams. Yes, that's smart too. Tuning to man coverage to stick on coverage on tight end delay longer. Exactly what I was just talking about. RPO fixes the quarterback will no longer be able to turn and run before completing his first step after the fake and the handoff. Okay, that's cool. 
Tuning to improve the angle of the read defender when playing QB to avoid fast QBs from being able to run around him. That's important too, because sometimes you read the QB and you still got ran around. And I was like, what was the point of even adding that as a counter? Um, playbook, some live playbook stuff. And so this some franchise stuff, but obviously we're a mud channel, so I'll, I'll stay out of here. But you guys can go ahead and go to this link. Uh, type in Madden 22 Gridiron Notes and you should see it and you'll see all that other stuff. But that's about it. Enjoy the rest of the video, guys. Enjoy the rest of the day worth of videos, I should say. Enjoy the rest of your day as well. Uh, hit that subscribe button. Turn that noti bell. Give this video a big thumbs up as always. And comment down below and let me know what's up. And of course, comment down below Poodle Squad and like the video. Thank you for watching. I'm out. Peace.